Hi, I'm Rachel from Gentle Frog. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. If you're having issues with your bookkeeping, please follow the link at the end of the video to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me. Thank you. I'm Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. In this video, we're just going to show you a sample training session. The purpose of this is for you to get to know myself and my training team. Hi, I'm Erica Bunker. I am part of Rachel's training team, and I will be guiding Kristen today through a training session. I'm Kristen with Happy Books Bookkeeping. I am pretending to be a sample customer for today's training. Hi, I'm Erica. How are you today? Doing pretty good. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. So I got the notification that you need some help with your QuickBooks and to figure out where we need to start first. Um, let's talk about some of the things that are bothering you with, with QuickBooks and what you're struggling with. And then we can go from there. It's kind of my jumping off point of like where we can go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of find, uh, finding it hard to navigate where everything is. Um, sometimes I have duplicates and sometimes I'm not sure like what account is matching to what payment. And um, I just kind of wanted to get some clarification on um, how to how to navigate this a little faster. Okay. Well, <clears throat> that being said, you are not the only one who struggles with duplicate payments, especially if you are working with the bank feed. Are you currently working with the bank feed? Yes. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of background about the bank feed before we actually dive into looking at it. The bank feed is set up by QuickBooks to actually automate your process. The problem with the way that it is currently set up, though, is the fact that QuickBooks expects you to do bookkeeping on a daily basis and therefore kind of automate the system on the back end for what they call matching. Now, if you go for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, which some people do, and you're not current with the things that you're that that you're doing on a daily basis, what happens is the bank pulls in your information, but there is a mismatch in information versus what it thinks should be there and what you have already put in there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it can't match up some of the things that you may may already have entered. And it says, oh, I don't recognize this. And so therefore in the bank feed, it'll have the add function. The match function says, oh, you've already manually entered this. I don't need to enter this again. Let me just connect this to something that's already in there. Add means that you have done nothing with it and that you are asking QuickBooks to go ahead and enter it on your behalf. So okay. the first thing that I tell people with the bank feed is when you start doing that, go through all of the things that you know 100% that you have already manually entered into QuickBooks and make sure that those items match up. If they don't match up, then there is a problem and you definitely do not want to add them back in there. We just basically kind of want to exclude them or when you get more familiar with how it works, force it to match it to a transaction that has not been already matched. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, how long does it usually take between when I usually, when I make a transaction or when I, when I do a transaction, how long does it take to pull it into the bank feed and into QuickBooks? So it can depend on your bank, but typically QuickBooks will pull into the prior day's transactions because everything in your bank account that is sitting there pending is usually either the, the previous business day, if it's a Monday or a holiday, the day after a holiday. So like you won't have transactions on Monday from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, potentially, depending on when, when it happened. Usually though, it's the previous days business transactions that will show up in your bank feed in QuickBooks. So you won't actually be current to date, like as in today's date, but most likely the day before through okay. the day before. So if I don't see it in the bank feed after a couple of days, then it's, then I should try to add it manually. Then we need to look at what's going on. 
Um, most of the time it should pull in everything from your bank feed. If it doesn't, there could be a connection problem. There could be a syncing problem with it. You know, something, something is off. Typically, if you're connected to your bank, it will pull in everything. Okay. Now you're probably more going to be more likely to see things in the bank feed that you don't recognize as it pulled in from the bank feed than the other way around. Mm -hmm. But okay. you will also get notification if there is a connection issue with your bank feed. Like it'll tell you with a big, big red thing that says not connected. Okay. All right. So let's hop into the bank feed so we can kind of tie everything that we've been talking together. So you're going to go over to banking. Okay. So down here, this is what we are used to seeing whenever we go in here. This is your bank feed and everything that's pulled in from your transaction history with the bank. So you'll see that it's finding some matching things. You'll see that it'll say, hey, you need to review this. You'll see some things that say add. What I like to do first is I know that all of these that are matching belong to something in QuickBooks, unless it's blank. Mm -hmm. So there are literally a hundred different ways that you can do the same thing in QuickBooks. I typically go the route of least resistance first meaning do all the things that I know first. I usually skip deposits because that can create a little um, crazy on the back end, especially if it's not matched or it thinks that it's matched, but it's not. I will do all of the expenses first. Then I will go back and double check the deposits. And if the deposits match up, then I'll do those. Okay. What about then, one like this where it says two matches found? Okay. So if you click on this, uh, click on the two matches found, and it'll show you down here that you have two expenses that were put into this for, for, for this dollar amount. And it doesn't recognize which one it is. So it pulled over from the bank detail as PAM seats. So you'll see that it chose expense 76 PAM seats. Now, if, that's ha if that had said books by Betsy, then you would be able to select that one. What I would do in this instance is I would make sure that if you know that books by Betsy and Pam are not the same people, then you can go ahead and select Pam. But sometimes this will happen where it's like, for instance, Rachel's with Gentle Frog, right? It will come in as Rachel, but really the payment was made to Gentle Frog or it's two separate transactions, one directly to Rachel as a vendor, one to Gentle Frog as a vendor. So you with this, in this case, you would just need to double check that you are selecting the correct one. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, so it can just go ahead and click match with this. Yes. All right.